Hello there, my name is Trevor Webb and in this video I'll talk about how to calculate voltage drop for copper cables within an electrical installation. This is something that is not explained at all within the Wiring Regulations BS7671 book. However, it is an extremely popular exam question that you will more than likely get in your exam, in one form or another. As always, answering a question in the exam will give you one point, and considering that you might get two, maybe even three questions in different forms about voltage drop, it is a good idea to be as prepared as possible for the ever so important 18th edition exam. So let's dive in. The first thing that you need to know is the formula for voltage drop, which is, of course, voltage drop equals millivolts per amp per meter times IB times L divided by 1000. This is not mentioned anywhere in the book, and that is exactly why I recommend making a note of it in the book right now. The best place to make a note of the formula is at the top of page 383, next to regulation 6.4, voltage drop in consumers' installations. Why here? Because, and I say this all the time to my students on the 18th edition course, you always start looking for any answer at the beginning of the book in the main table of contents. So if you look at page 3, contents, you will find appendix 4, current carrying capacity and voltage drop for cables. So, seeing this will take you straight to appendix 4, which is exactly where you want to be when you get an exam question related to voltage drop. And 6.4 is where the book talks about voltage drop, where table 4AB is located, which is an extremely important table, as you'll see later. So having the formula here for reference makes perfect sense. Right, so let's talk about this formula for just a little bit. What you need to know is that millivolts per amps per metre stands for voltage drop per ampere per metre. And this is a tabulated value that is specific for each cable listed in Appendix 4. For example, if you look on page 409, you will see table 4D5, 70 degrees Celsius thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat cable with protective conductor, which is what we electricians normally call flat twin and earth cable. And if you look at the last column of the table, you will see values listed for voltage drop per ampere per metre for all different conductor cross-sectional areas listed. So, if you now return to the formula for the calculation of voltage drop in copper conductors, you will now know that millivolts per amp per metre within the formula stands for this tabulated value, and now you know where to find it. Then... IB is your design current of the circuit, for example 20 amps or 32 amps or whatever is needed depending what the circuit is designed to supply. Capital L is your length, so the length of the circuit in metres. And finally, all of this is divided by 1000 so that we get the result in volts rather than millivolts. So now that this is clear, and we've made a note of the formula in the book, we can continue with a practical example of calculating voltage drop, similar to what you might get in the exam. The question might read, calculate the voltage drop for 2.5 mm square, 70 degrees Celsius thermoplastic, insulated and sheathed flat cable with protective conductor, supplying a circuit with a design current of 30 amps, protected by a 32 amp type B MCB with a cable run of 40 metres. So the first thing to look at is what information we can extract from this long and complicated sounding sentence. We can see that the cable that we need to look at is in fact what we call flat twin and earth cable for which all the details are in Appendix 4, Table 4D5. So this is a good start. As the question is about a cable with conductor cross-sectional area of 2.5 millimetres squared, 
we now have to look at the second row of table 4D5. Here you will see in the last column that the millivolts per amp per meter value is 18. In other words, a 2.5 millimeter square flat twin and earth cable has voltage drop of 18 millivolts per amp per meter. So this is our first value that we can insert into the formula. Then we can see that the design current is 30 amps. This is our second value. Finally, we can see that the length of the run is 40 metres. And with this, we have everything we need to calculate the voltage drop required and to answer the question. Remember, you are allowed to use a calculator in the exam. The answer is, of course, 21.6 volts. And this is how you do it. You extract all the information that you can find in the question and apply it to the formula. This question is as close as you can get to a real exam question. So it is really easy once you know the formula for calculating voltage drop and how to find and use the tables found in Appendix 4 for the millivolts per amps per metre values. I would just like to point out a few more things before we finish because they might be helpful for you in the exam. Remember the question that we used as an example mentioned a 32 amp type B MCB as a protective device for the circuit? The only reason why this piece of information was there is to confuse you and take you down a wrong path. Also, the question did not specify if the circuit was ring or radial, which in real life would be really important since you would not have a 32 amp MCB on a 2.5 mm squared radial circuit. This is why you should only pay attention to the data you need, such as the design current or the length of the circuit, and just ignore everything else. Try to remember this. Also, you might get a question on the formula itself, so just by having the formula noted in the book might be enough for a point in the exam. Something like, what does the capital L stand for? Then, you might get an additional question where you will need to verify your result to prove whether it is acceptable in terms of the regulations. So, for example, the result of our calculation was 21.6 volts. The next question might be, is this value acceptable or not? Working out this answer is really simple if you know how to do it. All you need to do is to look at table 4AB on page 383. This is, of course, where we made a note about our formula for voltage drop calculation. Remember when I said that it's an extremely important table? Now you'll see why. So, table 4AB gives you the maximum allowed voltage drop values in percentages for low voltage installations supplied directly from a public low voltage distribution system, first row. And you can see that for lighting it is 3% and for other uses it is 5%. But our result from the question was in volts, 21.6 volts. So how can we work out then if it is acceptable or not? Well, if we know that a drop of 3% stands for 6.9 volts and a drop of 5% stands for 11.5 volts in our 230 volt UK electricity system, we can see that our result of 21.6 volts is much more than what is allowed and is therefore unacceptable. And with this, we have answered another voltage drop related question in the exam. So, Making a note of the 6.9 volt value for 3% and 11.5 volt for 5% is another one of the little tricks I share with my students in the 18th edition online course. You'll find a link to this online course somewhere below this video and since I am the author of the course I can't recommend it highly enough. The course has been developed in association with LearnZone Media and is just like a classroom course, 
only better because it's much cheaper and you can study as slow or as fast as you want to in the comfort of your own home. The online course is made up of video presentations very similar to this one that you have just watched and you also get revision questions to practice for each part of the book as well as a dedicated exam simulator for the City and Guilds 2382 18 exam. So, if you like what you have seen and heard so far, please go ahead and check it out. Bye for now.